Hi there, I'm going to show you how to get started with aggregate client for time and attendance applications. Um, we're kind of taking it up not from the very, very beginning. We're going to assume that you set up the server already and you're running the client now. So let me just give you a quick tour of the uh, system tree here and then we're going to see how to set up your uh, organization hierarchy. So the relevant parts of your system tree basically is look at devices here. You see this is my uh, time and attendance terminal. Wait, let's make this a bit larger. Yeah, that's as far as we can get here. So anyways, this is uh, my actual uh, time and attendance device. You see the tooltip there, it's a time recorder. Uh, this one supports aggregate natively, it's a TR610. So I configured it to connect to aggregate server. And here I can see it in the client. Uh, and that's basically where my uh, users punch in and out every day, supposedly. So that's one thing you should know. That's under devices. You should have your device here. So now let's get down to actually setting up the organization hierarchy and setting up the first user too. So um, we have a node here called organizations. Let's double click it to create our first one. Uh, we're going to kind of a Star Wars theme here. So the organization name is going to be Empire. The name uh, has to be, it can be either uppercase or lowercase, but you cannot uh, have spaces in it. And then the actual description is what you'll see in the tree. I don't know why I keep writing empires anyway, it's the empire. And you're going to see that in the tree. So let's click OK, and there we go. In here, in each organization, we have a division. Right now we have none, obviously. Division groups lets you um, basically lump several divisions together if you want to produce reports for several divisions at once, etc. But anyways, we have no divisions at the moment. And as you can see, by the way, you have a cardholders node right under the organization. So you don't necessarily have to dig deeper and you, you don't have to go all the way to the department level to start setting up cardholders. For example, uh, the uh, CEO might not be in any specific department. You might want to just put him under uh, organization. That is, if he even punches in the morning, of course. Um, so let's set up a division now. Division, let's call it uh, Death Star. Yeah. Death Star. That's the Empire Death Star here. Good. Now we got a division. Within the division, we have a department or several departments, as the case may be. And again, I can directly put any card holders right in the division without setting up any further departments. But since the Empire is a pretty big organization, we're going to set up a department now. Again, double click. And I have here the canteen. Lots of typos today, sorry about that. And this is the canteen, you know, because there must have been a Death Star canteen, right? Um, and that's basically that. I mean, I cannot get any lower than canteen, I mean than a department in this case. I can uh, have cardholders in th inside the department and I'm going to set one up right now in fact. So let's double click the cardholders here. And this dialog here has much more information to set up about the cardholder. Cardholder name again is just the, uh, the context name meaning it cannot, it's not the actual person's name, it cannot have spaces in it, etc. It's just, it's again, it's a context name, just like the organization name, etc. So we're going to just call this one manager. And first name Charles, and then Stevens. And the title is Head of Catering. We can fill in the other details or not as the case may be. For now, we're just going to leave them as is. And OK. And there we go. He's really deep in the tree, so let's scroll a bit. Ah, there we go. We see Mr. Stevens, head of catering, right here. If I double click it, I see the properties dialog. And again, I have, this is what I had when I just uh, first defined the user, right? But I now have several other tabs I can play with. Specifically, the one you should really care about is the Cards Badges tab because that lets you set up whatever card number the guy signs in with every morning, you know, the, the, the actual card to be associated with the person. So we get a badge ID here and let's say they have uh, badges just for catering. 
So manager would be Kettering 01. And the badge is active. It's active as of today, as of right now, in fact. And it is never going to deactivate automatically. I can always uncheck the active. Let's say Mr. Stevens loses his card, so I just uncheck active and then he gets a new card. But still, I'm going to leave his old card in here just for the reports, etc. So that's what active and inactive is for. Good. Another thing, after I set up the uh, users, let's say I set up my hierarchy, etc., we go into the subject of shifts. Now, shifts, you get a, shifts basically define the schedule by which your organization works, right? And you can have what is called in uh, aggregate a regular shift. A regular shift is just a cycle of days here. Let's, let's go in here and look at it. Uh, well, it's not defined right now, but basically, as you can see, it's just it's a cycle of days. Like, for example, I can have a three-day regular shift where it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the days just rotate one after the other. That's one option. So let's create a new shift by double-clicking shifts. We call it weekly and demo weekly canteen shift. Let's say that is the canteen schedule on the Death Star, right? So double click. Now the weekly shift, as you can see, actually has uh, Monday through Sunday and each day gets a row with the same columns as the uh, Let's make it a bit smaller so you can see it actually. There we go, now we can see it. So each day gets a row with the same columns as the uh, regular shift. And the manual goes over each one of the columns, but basically this is where you can set up how your organization works schedule-wise so that a person knows or actually the system knows if somebody should get overtime or uh, how long should his lunch break be, etc. All of these different parameters are defined via shifts. So that would be your next stop in configuring the system. Now, after you define all the shifts, of course, you can go back to the uh, users or the department or the, you know, whatever level of the organization you want to set up. Let's say I want to put the entire canteen and all of its employees on that uh, demo weekly canteen shift. So I double click. I go to custom shift and then here there we go demo weekly canteen shift click OK and now basically aggregate knows that that shift applies to all employees under their canteen this way it can again calculate overtime and set up for the reports that's about it for the getting started video the manual has much more information this was just a very small run through of the system just to get a general idea of what it looks like. I invite you to read the manual, look into it, download the system, you can get the trial for free, and just play around with it and see what you can uh, get to. And of course, ask us if you have any questions. Good luck!